there's another kind of evidence. Um, the, the problem with patient studies, they're very, very powerful when you get them. But um, generally, when people have brain damage, it doesn't neatly respect the boundaries of whatever region you want to study. You can't just say, oh, show me all the people with a damage all and only in the fusiform face area and nowhere else. Like that is the one case in the entire literature, right? So it'd be nice to have some other cases, right? And of course, you never have the before data. Maybe this guy couldn't recognize faces before his lesion. He says that's not true, but you know, you don't have the data. Right? So we really would like to have more data. We need another method. And importantly, we want to be able to test the causal role of different parts of the brain in normal subjects. Okay? Um, so that's the challenge. How do we do it? There's only one real method that enables us to test the causal role of different parts of the brain in normal subjects, and that's transcranial magnetic stimulation. Okay, so in transcranial magnetic stimulation, you take a coil like this one here, and you stick it next to the head like this, and you run a current through the coil, and the current makes a brief magnetic field change, and that brief magnetic field change affects neural activity in the region underneath the coil. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So let's try it. Um, OK, so first, we're going to do a little demo here. Alex can come up here and help me. Um, but first, let me remind you, when, if you want to be able to see anything, and I can't promise you it will work, but I think we have a shot at it at least. If you want to see anything with TMS, if we zapped, say, my visual cortex and I couldn't see anything, I could tell you, OK, I can't see anything. That's not very exciting. <laughs> right? We want to zap something where there's going to be an effect you can see, so you don't have to just take my word for it. So what are we going to zap? We're going to zap motor cortex, OK? Motor cortex is shown up here. That's that, um, that uh, red strip right there. Uh, in me, it runs right about there. Alex will find it in a minute. This is Alex Kell, <laughs> grad student in our department. Um, and to remind you, you've probably seen this elsewhere, motor cortex has a map of the body. So in this part of motor cortex down there, you have the tongue, and then you move up, you have the face, then the hand, and then the arm. And the leg representation of motor cortex is like coming down into the sulcus between the two hemispheres. OK, so um, with TMS, uh, what Alex is going to do is zap. Um, we're going to aim for the hand representation of motor cortex. It doesn't always work. We're not promising. We'll try. Um, and so he will try to make my fingers twitch. It's not a big effect. You'll have to look close. You can come closer if you want. Um, I'll get stuff out of the way. Um, and we'll give that a shot. OK. So I'm going to sit here because this works best when, um, if my hands are relaxed. OK, so sorry, we've got a lot of cords in the way here. Don't trip. Can you slide over just a little yes, bit? Yes, certainly. Of course, I have cords, too. There's cords <laughs> all over the place. OK, is that good? Uh, yeah. OK, so basically, the, T the TMS device this box is just a bunch of big capacitors and a switch connected to this coil. Um, and so, um, OK, now first before we do anything, um, Alex is going to go for my right motor cortex, approximately the hand finger region. What, what do you expect to see? OK, which one? Left hand. Left hand, right? He's going to zap over here. OK. So one thing you're likely to see is you're likely to see me wince. I'm not wincing or you know, twitching, something like that. There are also face nerves that go on the surface, and those get zapped. And so if I blink or do something weird like that, you'll notice that tends to be on the same side of the coil. That's because it's getting nerves on the surface. Okay. So the, real, the way you tell a real cortical effect from a surface nerve effect is the cortical effect should be on the other side. OK? okay. Can I ask go for a question? it. Yes. Is this I hope not. Uh, we've done it a lot and nothing's happened yet. <laughs> Lots of other people have done it a lot too. It's like approved by the FDA too. Like. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just a trial and error. What? How long does it last? It's uh, pretty brief. Yeah, well, th this version is very brief, just you know, a few milliseconds. Um, there are versions that last longer where you do a very slow thing and the claims are that you can get effects to last around 20 minutes or so. We're not doing that version. OK, so it will be very, very subtle. If my fingers yeah. move, it'll be tiny. OK, and I have to try to relax yeah. my arms. Yeah. 
Hold on, let's just make sure. There you go. Oh, it worked right there. Can you see it? It's very subtle. That's pretty good, Alex. Yeah. He's learned where my hand representation is. <laughs> okay, see if you can get even more. That was pretty good. That's good. Oh, you just got my, my middle finger. That's good. Okay, so now he's going up Let's my head. Move up your arm. Okay. Yeah. Is it moving? You're well, it's happening a little bit. It's subtle. Okay, let's try actually maybe if we go like this, it'll be Oh yeah. yeah. So like that <laughs> that's good. versus like Oh, that was good. Okay, that's so that's arm. Good. I'm trying to move. Pretty good. Am I moving down? Like is that that's more hand, right? Yeah, that was more hand. Yeah. Uh huh. Then, so you can get a finger. Oh you want a finger? Well I don't know. Oh, 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 there, oh, you oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You have to come over and set my side. Yeah. <laughs> um And then it back like up here. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, Alex, do you think we can go for the leg representation? Yeah. Just try it. Okay, now, if you look up there, the legs are really, they're way down in there. Yeah. We probably can't reach it, but let's try. Okay, to do that, you need to be able to see if I'm moving my leg. So. I should have brought up pillows so you could reach. <laughs> Can you slide down a little bit? Sure. Am I stepping on anybody? Uh, Sorry, no pardon me. Not a pardon my feet. <laughs> um, let me turn. Great. No, you, you can lay down. Okay, just slightly. You might want to. No, I, I found it. All right. Not sure okay, if this so, is going to work. Okay, so, yeah. Who knows? So this should be which leg? Both. Left. He's zapping my right motor cortex. Oh, you're right. Could be both if it was smack yeah. in the middle. But he's going to be, yeah. Yeah, try. Anything? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. Making me blink. Yeah. Um. Wait, what are we looking for? Um, leg, leg. Oh, you got my arm there. That was pretty really? good. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was the best one yet. All right. <laughs> oh, you got my leg. Keep going, keep going. Oh, yes. yeah, there you go, a little bit. Oh, definitely. Okay, so you see, you can map the whole motor homunculus this way. <laughs> okay, now, maybe you guys think that we're just faking this. It's possible. So Alex is going to show you that this thing is actually doing something besides making a cracking noise. It's a quarter. Charlie, get out of the way. It's okay, sweetheart. Mama's okay. Yeah, just a All right. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> okay. So while Alex is putting that away, we'll get back to what can you learn from TMS. Okay, so that's the method. With motor cortex, when you activate those neurons, you you know, they feed out and produce a signal in a muscle, and because a set of adjacent neurons code for the same muscle movement, you get a net twitch, okay? Um, to study perception, like the face area, what we want to know is, you know, I suppose if we're, you're really lucky, thanks Alex, you might see, you might be able to zap that region and suddenly see a face. That would be cool. Kind of like that uh, video I showed you guys before of the guy with the electrodes right inside his brain. But that's relatively unlikely because you'd have to have a whole elaborate neural code and what is the chance that some external coil is going to inject just the right code. So in the case of perception, people usually use TMS to ask if you can disrupt a perceptual process by zapping right after the stimulus is presented.